Today we are continuing in our Just Add Water series, but we're gonna add a little bit of ode to your mom in there, just to encourage our moms, but it is going to apply to every single person in the room, every single person on our other campuses, every single person watching online. Pastor Daniel kicked us off last week and it was powerful, it was incredible. This is, that's all right, you can clap. It's a good spot, it's a great word. If you did not catch it, please go back and watch it. It was powerful. But this is a powerful series because we're digging in to the ways in which we go deeper in our faith. It's literally so important because we have to understand the difference between the knowledge of the cross and the understanding of how to apply it to our purpose for today. There is a big disconnect there, but it's really powerful. It's more than a one and done. There is so much more to relationship with Jesus than maybe even what you've ever known because maybe you haven't jumped all the way in yet. And that's what our prayer is for you today, that you would take the steps to jump all the way in. For instance, how many of you know that if I drive down the road to Ikea and I pick up a chair, a table, anything along those lines, and I do not read and study that trusty manual of instructions, that table is as good as useless, y'all. There is no purpose for that. Can anybody personally attest to the fact that without the instruction manual, it's no good? Amen? Amen. We sometimes, when making things, taking things that are simple, sometimes we make them a little more complex than they really are, right? Elbow your neighbor, say, there's a better way. There's a better way. And in this series, we are simplifying and answering the questions of how do I grow in relationship with Jesus? What is a continuing relationship? And what do I do now? So how do we keep it simple and grow in God? You begin by recognizing that life is full of differing seasons. It's more than just winter, spring, summer, and fall. There are so many different seasons of life. Ecclesiastes 3.1 says, to everything there is a season, a time for every purpose under heaven. The starting point of your growth in Jesus, your daily growth in Jesus is understanding and acknowledging your current season, not where you want to be, not where you hope to be, not where your mom is or even how your mama sees you, but where you really are. The first thing you have to do is be really, really honest. Where am I? Where am I in my process of growth? Where am I with the Lord? My mama's favorite hobby in life has always been, as long as I can remember, gardening. And it's an injustice to call her a gardener. Any gardeners in the room? I heard one, whoop, okay, there's one or two, thank you. It is an injustice to call my mama a gardener because the plots of land that she would garden were literally like small farms because she loved gardening that much that she was like, if there's a vegetable, if there's a fruit, I'm growing it. And she would wait all year long to grow these gardens and she could not wait for summer to come. She would embrace the sweat, the dirt, all the critters that would come into her garden. She'd come up with all the contraptions that there were to kind of keep them out. She, I always would laugh, my husband laughs at me when I say this, but I considered her like a snake tamer. For some reason, there were always snakes in her garden and my mom was afraid of nothing because she was like, you're getting out of my garden and I'm taking care of my produce. This was how she was, still is. She did not mind the back aches or the blisters, all of it, because she not only loves the harvest, but she loves the journey of growing, loves it. So today I'm gonna share with you the seasons of growth from Mama's Garden. And forgive me, as you see up on the screen, I'm gonna have to poke at some of you, and some of you might completely disagree with me on this, but Mama is spelled M-O-M-M-A. <laughs> mama, Mama. For those of you that think Mama is spelled M-A-M-A along with our English dictionary, why? Why are we spelling Mama as Mama or Mama? Anybody else join me in this aggravation? Anybody. I feel as if I'm usually alone on this one, but these are life's pet peeves by Jackie Groves today, okay? <laughs> All right, so season one. This is the first season that we are gonna talk about. In this season, you are the seed. 
In this season of life, you are not the planter, you are the planted. That means you are one of two different people. The first one, you are either fresh and young, new to the faith, immature in your understanding of the word, immature in your understanding of who God is, needing the time to sprout some real roots and get anchored into the soil of your faith, get anchored in your foundation in Jesus. In this season, you may be honestly feeling kind of excited and cocooned in this safe place where you feel like, I don't know what I don't know, but I feel like God's just kind of wrapping me up in this spot. And you may be excited about it, looking forward to it. Or you might be the second person. And that second person is the person that's really not new to faith. That person is a little more, you've been through seasons of life. You've been through things with the Lord. And when you look at this season, it feels a little more like punishment. It feels a little more like I am not planted, but I'm buried alive under here. I'm feeling claustrophobic here because I feel like I can't get a sound out of this room that I feel trapped in. And if you're in that spot, it's easy to feel a little resentful of the season, disappointed in where you are as opposed to where you thought you would be, maybe overwhelmed by the walls that feel like they have you encased and enclosed. But whichever of you of those you are, if you are the first one or the second one, I want you to know that you are both in this season being sheltered, being covered, and being protected on all sides because for this season, there is a great purpose. Amen? Amen. Psalm 91 verses 1 and 2 says, He who dwells in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. Under a shadow means hidden, in hiding. I will say of the Lord, He is my refuge and my fortress. My God, in Him I will trust. Romans 8, 28 says, And we know that all things work together for good to those who love God, to those who are called according to what? His purpose. There is great purpose. Because in this season, God is refining and defining things that are inside of you that you may not even know are there. And you need to be safe and protected in relationship. And that is what he's providing in this season. Psalm 32, 7 says, you are my hiding place. You will protect me from trouble and surround me with songs of deliverance. See, God sees what is on the other side when you break through the soil. So he knows what you need right now. He knows exactly what you're missing. He knows what you've been through. He knows exactly the time that you need to get it from him. So he will keep you there until you get it. So let us be people that have the eyes to see it. Press in in this season. Don't fight it. Don't be trying to fight outside of your little cocoon. Recognize, no, I'm safe here. This is a good spot to be. And don't allow all the outside interactions and distractions to be a confusing thing for you. This is a time to acquaint and reacquaint yourself with the word of God. Matthew 6, says, but seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all these things will be added to you. All these things, all these things that you wish you were doing, all these things that you would like to be doing, all these things that you feel like, God, don't you see me? Why am I stuck here? All of these things will be added to you when you seek first the kingdom of God. Isaiah 40, verse 29 says, he gives power to the faint. And to him who has no might, he increases strength. Y'all, there is power on the other side of this planted season because it's a fresh start for you. Amen. Amen is there's always celebration to be had in a fresh start, but it is only fresh and exciting and powerful if we are able to have the vision to see what God is doing. Matthew 13, 16 says, but blessed are your eyes for they see and your ears for they hear. God designed us to have the eyes to see him and to look past all the other distractions and to hear his voice and to look past all of it. This first season is a season where he's pulling you in and he's defining that and he's saying, listen to me, look at me, look at me, listen to me, hear me, know me, 
because I have great things and great power on the other side of this. So press in, press into his presence, press into worship, press into the word, press in to prayer, press into the spirit of God, because I promise you in this season, he is speaking to you and he wants you to fine tune your hearing, to be able to understand, ah, it's silent and I hear your voice, God. What happens when it gets noisy? Now I know what your voice sounds like because I've heard it in the silence. So when it gets crazy, I can hear that voice. My kids can identify me by more than just my really loud hair. They know my voice in a room because they have heard it in the silence before. Amen? Amen. He is speaking. And if you are ever going to invest into others well, if you are ever going to get to that spot where you are able to pour out and step into your calling and into your gifting, then you are going to need a season of being invested into. That is what this season is. This is a season where God is saying, let me invest into you. Let me pour everything that you need onto you right now. Because in the next season, you will be the one doing the planting. But not just any seed, not just any seed. Season two, you have to plant the right seed. That's what the second season is all about. It's planting the right seed. You are no longer planted, but now you get to decide what kind of harvest you are called to reap. You get to decide based upon the calling and the instruction that God has given you, what do I want these seeds that I put in the ground to produce in my life and in others? And you are called to be very wise about which seeds you plant. If you want a zucchini, y'all tell me, what do you put in the ground? Y'all were, you thought I was gonna trick you there, didn't you? <laughs> it's zucchini, right? If you want tomatoes, what do you put in the ground? Potatoes. Tomatoes, do you put potatoes in? Yes. This one does, <laughs> but most wouldn't if they wanted tomatoes. If you want tomatoes, you put in tomato seeds. And when we come out of the planted season into this current season, and we have an understanding of who we are in Christ, then we understand that any old seed won't do. Planting it in any place is not good enough anymore because now you have a better understanding of the purpose that's on your life and how specific it is, just like a mother knows Without knowing what it actually looks like, she knows what the purpose is. She knows what she is called to do in this season. You have a calling and a plan from God to accomplish certain things that he has set aside just for you. You are no longer just the buyer at the farmer's market. You're the one that's getting to plant the seeds. And God is asking you, what will you do with what I've given you? What will you do with your calling, with your gifting, with your purpose? How will you take care of it? First Peter four verse 10 says, each of you should use whatever gift you have received to serve others as faithful stewards of God's grace in its various forms. See, there is a grace that comes with purpose. It was a few years ago, um, Daniel and I were I was, well, we were, we were leading a workshop for a room full of worship leaders, and I was very pregnant. When I say very pregnant, how many of you know what I mean? I mean, I was very pregnant, okay? I was beyond the season of like, oh, she's so cute. I was in the season where people were like, don't look at her because you, you don't want to lie. So I was, I was in a, in a full of pregnant, full of life stage of pregnancy, okay? So we were leading this workshop together. And we were, standing, we were standing next to one another and we were talking, he was talking, he was sharing at this one particular point, he was sharing about how our personalities are a little different in certain ways. And there's a, there's a lot about our personalities that are very similar, but there are a couple little ways that we're like, Lord, you, you know what you are doing. And he was telling how there is this, this tendency within him to be like, oh, let's go this way and I wanna go that way and then I'm gonna do this and I'm gonna do the other thing and I've got this and I've got that. And he, 
he was admitting he didn't have a whole lot of reigning in abilities, organizing, administrating, you know, sticking to one thing at a time sort of stuff. And he was like, but I'm so grateful that God has given me my wonderful wife here. He was saying such sweet things about my abilities to organize and administrate. And he said, I'm like, I'm like a helium balloon and she's the weight that holds me down. <laughs> He's running out of the room, y'all. It was in that moment that I realized there's a grace for this purpose right now. Because I got a room full of angry ladies about to whip my husband because they're like, how could you? Look at her. At that point, I could have held down quite a few loads of helium balloons, I promise. And I'm great with it. I enjoy being pregnant, no issue. But I knew in that moment what his intention was and I only laughed as the room became furious because I realized, oh, my purpose is to protect my guy in this moment. And there was great grace, great grace. Yes, but the seeds that you are planting in this season, those seeds are relationship seeds. You are planting seeds into your current relationship and your future one. So are you investing into the future and what is lasting, or are you investing into the moment, into pleasure that's fleeting? Which one are you investing into? You are also planting seeds of integrity, you are planting the seeds of what it is that your reputation looks like. Are you investing into the reputation you want, the one that reflects Christ's heart? Or are you investing into a reputation that you are going to work hard to repair later on? Which one? It is one or the other. And you are also allowing seeds in your heart at this time that will take root and will grow and will sprout and they will develop. The way that you let those in is by what you look at with your eyes, what you listen to with your ears, and the words you allow to come out of your own mouth. And you have to be practicing Proverbs 4.23 that says, above all else. Does that say like when you have time? Does that say like when you're able to, like just it's okay if like if you can do it like every now and then? No, it says above all else. First priority, above all else, guard your heart for everything you do flows from it. Are you planting seeds that are gonna cause issues for your heart down the road? Galatians 6, 7 says, do not be deceived. God is not mocked for whatever one sows, that will he also reap. Good things, y'all, don't come from bad seeds. And I am not calling any one person a bad seed, but what is it that you are planting? What are you putting into the soil of your life? What are you speaking out with your mouth? Who are you gathering around you to be speaking into your own life? Because I promise you, good seeds produce good fruit. You don't develop into the man and the woman of God that you are called to be without intentional choosing and intentional investing. But guess what else? Your children don't just become either. There has to be intentional investment on your part every single day as well. God has positioned you to mold them while they are still moldable. How many of you know there comes a point you don't get to do the molding any longer. They get to apply what you taught them. So what have you taught them? How have you molded them? It is a hard task that all of us get to come to terms with in parenthood, but you realize that everything you need is in him. Every single thing. So what are you planting? What are you investing in? As a mother, I ask God every single day to show me the heart of my children. Because how many of you know that sometimes in life, it's not the heart that we get to see in our kids. Sometimes it's the behaviors that we get to see, right? And sometimes those behaviors are not all that exciting, right? Anybody in a not so exciting season of parenthood? Anybody at all got a one proud mama here? Yeah. 
So as I was, I was, as I was thinking about you all today, and I was thinking about this heart that I pray for literally, I remembered something that I keep close by me, and it's, you probably can't see it very well, but it's this delightful little goat, okay? This wonderful little goat that I have, and it actually was a gift that I gave to my husband for Christmas. It was a stocking stuffer of his, but how many of you give gifts to later just take them back? I mean, I do that. I do that because I know him well enough to know that he'll just squish, squish it to the side and I can tiptoe back later and grab it. So I did with this delightful little goat because here's the thing. This goat I, I apply and I use a lot in my life when I'm saying these prayers to God about, Lord, show me their heart because I really need to see it right now because inside this is what I feel like. <laughs> right now. My sweet 13-year-old, he's becoming a teenager. God, I need you to show me his heart so that I don't. Because how many of you know that sometimes our prayers don't line up with how we are currently feeling? Do we have anybody in the house that needs to scream like a goat every now and then to remind yourself God's still bigger than how I feel right now. Amen? That is why our prayers have to continue. And they have to continue in the direction of what we know God will do in and through us, even if we're not seeing it right in this specific moment. Amen. I ask God to open my eyes so that I can see their weaknesses and their strengths. And has, as he has been faithful to do so, I have had to make the intentional choice to continue to plant seeds of worship, to plant seeds of joy, seeds of kindness, seeds of service, seeds of discipline, seeds of grace. Because for every seed that I choose to plant in their hearts, I pray that he would also teach me how to water that seed and that he would bring others into their lives that would also continue to water that seed because that's my commission as a mother is to recognize the fertile field that my children's lives are. Some of you might say, my kids is more like a desert, like it's a dry wasteland right now. <laughs> Some of you might say, it's kind of a jungle in there. I don't even know how to get through it. But no matter how you would describe it, it's still a fertile field, and there are so many seeds that they will encounter in their lives, just like you and I have. But my greatest task as their mother is to plant such a field of beautiful, faith-filled things in their life during this season that I have them for, that no matter what the enemy throws at them, there is an abundance of seed under the surface ready to bloom ready to be activated, ready to be put into place. And here's the promise that we hold on to. First Corinthians 3, 6 says, I planted the seed, Apollos watered it, but God has been making it grow. Amen. Sometimes there are things under the surface in ourselves, in our kids, that God's working on. Even if you are in that season one, God's working on things under the surface. He is making it grow even when we can't see it. He is still working. Nothing happens by coincidence. We are called to plant intentionally, but we can count on a supernatural God to do the heavy lifting. Amen? Amen. Amen. We recognize that every word that we speak, every action we choose, every person that we connect with, every single thing that we do in life goes into the soil of our lives. In this stage and from here on out, you have to choose to plant the right seeds for the mission of your life, the right seed for your calling, the right seed for your purpose, the right seed for who God is calling you to be plant the right seeds. Amen? Amen? Amen. And season three, this one I call WWW. This one is a mouthful. This one is water, weed, and weight. 
Say that one three times fast and I will be very proud of you. It's impressive. This is a significant season because God is asking more of you. He is saying, I have invested all of this and now I'm trusting you with more. I'm trusting you to accomplish more. So after he has pulled you out of the planted season and after he has invested into you an understanding of who he has called you to be and who you are, that's where we are at stage three, where we must begin to water the seeds planted and we have to prune them. We have to take care of the investment, just like we do with a brand new baby. Anybody in here have a brand new baby? A brand new baby, or even maybe one that's a little fresh? Just a little bit? A couple, a couple of like, just timid hands. But we, everybody loves a fresh baby, right? We all love a new baby. We love the baby smell. We love the baby skin. We just love babies. And there's one thing we understand. It's how to care for a baby. Everybody knows you use delicate hands with a baby. Don't touch that baby's hand. You've got germs. Don't let anybody touch their hands. Yuck. You don't touch touch baby's hands. But you also, you talk quietly around babies. You don't want to wake them up. You hold the back of their head because their necks aren't developed. We understand these delicate things about babies. But that is also the watering season. Because it is not only just for growth and maintenance, it is also for full development. Because how many of you know that up to this point, whatever point you are in in your relationship with Jesus, you have grown to get here. Which means if you take steps backwards, it's considering digressing. A baby's already grown in mama's tummy for nine months. They are already developed in a whole lot of ways, but we still have to handle with care and with intention. My husband teases a lot about my discipline and my drive and my biceps. He does, he does. But the truth is I have the microphone now, so I will tell the full truth about my biceps. It is true. However, this season's been a little busier than you know other ones have been. We've taken on a couple additional things for a little bit here. And the time that I had to invest into that Peloton that I just love so much, which is the source of the biceps that he talks about so lovingly, um, I, I'll be honest, my Peloton and I are like acquaintances right at this very particular moment, and it saddens my heart. But how many of you know that that lack in my time invested, it's going to show up? And guess where it shows up, y'all? It shows up in those muscles that he likes so much. (laughs) Because my strength is not as well defined in this season because I've not had the time to make the investment of not only growth, but also maintenance. Because the watering season is both a season of growth and maintenance. Ephesians 3, 17 through 19 says, so that Christ may dwell in your hearts through faith, that you being rooted and grounded in love may have strength to comprehend with all the saints what is the breadth and length and height and depth and to know the love of Christ that surpasses knowledge, that you may be filled with the fullness of God. Y'all, this is why we water. This is why we dig into the word daily. This is why we press into worship. This is why we listen for the Holy Spirit. But if I remember anything well about my mother's garden, wasn't how well she planted and how meticulous she was, because y'all, she was meticulous. I remember, I watched her from inside. I was very aware. And it wasn't how much she watered, because my goodness, she watered all the time. It was how often she weeded her garden. It was how intentional she was with weeding her garden. And y'all, she never once complained. She just did the hard work because she understood the necessity. Too often, I think we assume that because we tilled the soil and because we were selective in the seeds that we put in the ground and we were really careful with the way in which we planted it, that there should be no disruption that pops up out of the soil, right? How often do we find ourselves in that spot where we say, I've done all the right things, but why am I going through that? Why is that showing up in my life? Because just like your good fruit started as a seed, a weed also starts as a seed. It is a reality that we have to be very, very aware of. And here's an interesting fact. 
I think everybody loves in some way, probably not you men. You men would probably be like, I don't, I'm not gonna describe myself as someone who loves sunflowers. But I think most part, most people can appreciate a sunflower, right? Especially a field of sunflowers, right? Sunflowers are so sunny and bright and they just remind you of summer. But there is one thing that you may not know about sunflowers had you never planted a field of sunflowers or even grown one or two. And that is that sunflowers are challenging to grow because of weed control. Sunflowers grown from a seed take up to two weeks to pop through the soil. And guess what doesn't take that long? Weeds. Weeds pop up a whole lot faster than that and they are disguised enough to look similar to a sunflower so that when the real sunflower does break out, it is actually hidden in the shade of the weed that grew up first and wasn't properly removed. Some of y'all that just kind of ticks you off. You're like, ah, it makes me so upset. I know exactly what she's talking about. Others of you are like, so what? Why are we giving weeds such a bad time? Some of them are cute. So what is the problem? Because they steal the nutrients from the seed that was planted on purpose. They block the sunlight. They get in the way of the plant's mission to grow and ultimately they stunt the growth of the real seed that was planted on purpose. Has anybody ever experienced something that was counterfeit? Something that looked like, sounded like, felt like, maybe even smelled like the real deal, but you found out, oh no, that's not the real deal. Maybe you were believing for a job or for a spouse or for a home, maybe for Houston's best tamales. I don't know what it was you were believing for. Whatever it was, and before God's best came into sight, you were offered the distraction of a mediocre option. Anybody ever been there? Moms, this is not the time to elbow your adult children. Not the time. <laughs> Elbows tight. Look ahead. They'll get it. And maybe in this moment, you considered it. Maybe you said, ah. Maybe you rejected it immediately. Maybe you were duped by it. Either way, that is the weed that we have to be wise enough to discern, disciplined enough to search for, and willing to do the hard work of removing it from our lives. Because too often we recognize a weed and we say, oh, is it really doing that much harm? Is it really that big of a deal? It's a big deal, y'all. If you can recognize it as counterfeit, get it out. It is not part of your future. John 8, 32 says, and you will know the truth and the truth will what? Set you free. Let all my freedom groups shout about it. Yeah. A weed will grow right up next to your developing seed. It'll try to hide itself close by in the hopes that you won't notice, but you will. And when you do, be willing to weed. Because as you water and as you weed, then you wait. Genesis 8.22 says, while the earth remains, seed time and harvest, cold and heat, summer and winter, day and night shall not cease. There are ultimately three very important words in that scripture and they are seed, time, and harvest. The guarantee in between the seed and the harvest is the what? The time. If you have to wait on anything, you will be waiting to see your seed develop. That is the hardest part of life's journey, to trust, to wait, to watch, to anticipate, to not give up hope. Waiting is hard. A mother knows well the process of growing pains. Can I get an amen? Amen. amen. We know it well in our physical bodies, but we also know it because we have to watch the growing pains of our children's lives. And sometimes it's exceptionally difficult because our seat is a passenger seat view and we're not in a driver's ed car, y'all, so we don't have a steering wheel to say, no, 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 there is, let's stop before we get to that collision. Let's not cause another fiasco. We have to just watch and pray and wait. And it is hard, but in the waiting, we are stretched 
And the stretching is often the greatest part of our growth because we're stretched to trust, we're stretched to hold our peace, we're stretched to be used in different ways than we expected and sometimes prefer. Habakkuk 2.3 says, For still the vision awaits its appointed time. It hastens to the end. It will not lie. If it seems slow, wait for it. It will surely come. It will not delay. And that brings us to our fourth and final season. And that is the season of harvest, y'all. This is the season we get to celebrate. This is the season where we say, ah, everything we've put in the ground, we see it now. And we're so, so excited. Everybody thinks that this is the place of greatest victory, but really the victory was established in the other seasons. The victory was set in place by how you prepared and how much you trusted God during the season and how much you allowed him to develop inside of you. In this season, you get to see it with your eyes. But in the other seasons... God was teaching you how to see it with your eyes of faith. Amen. Because 2 Corinthians 5, 7 says we walk by faith, not by sight. And guess what, y'all? This whole cycle, it's a repetitive one. It's so exciting. Life repeats itself. So celebrate now and understand that in this season that you are in, this celebration season, if you are to this spot, God will most likely plant you again at some point and ask you to have new vision and new wisdom and new insight for a new task. See, there's something in a mama that we can all learn from. She gets that there is something happening that's greater than herself. She gets that there are so many things that she's not gonna be enough for on her own. She gets that the mission is to lay down her old self to grow into a more capable version. Whether you are a mother in this place or not, whether you are at Cinco or Woodlands or Tanzania and Uganda or online and you're a mother or not, The mission is the same for each and every one of us. John 3 verse 30 says, he must increase and I must decrease. That's the mission. So let me ask you, what is the season that you are in right now? Which of those other seasons that we just talked about can you relate to? Are you planted? Have you planted the right seeds? Do you need to do some replanting, some weeding? Have you been a little lazy? in your watering season? What is the journey that you are on? And most importantly, what is the journey of faith that you are on? Because what I want you to know today is what is God trying to develop in you? Would you stand to your feet with me? I wanna pray over you today. God, I thank you so much for every single person in this room at each of our locations. And I ask God right where they are, that you would speak with clarity, God. You would speak the kindest confirmation of the season of life that they are in and what there is left to be pulled out of them and placed inside of them. Give them so much confidence in who you are and your leading that they rest in peace, knowing, God, I just wanna follow you. I just wanna be part of this journey that you have crafted out specifically for me. And I am so grateful for a God that guides and leads me and that each person knows that no matter what they stand in front of, whether it's a mountain, whether it's a victory, there is nothing too great for you, God. There is nothing that you do not have your hand on in their lives. There is nothing that you are not riding their victory for. And I pray that there is great peace for them. With every head bowed and every eye closed, if you're here today and you do not know Jesus as your Savior, if you would if you would say, Jackie, everything that you're talking about, I feel that entrapment. I feel that, that burial, but I don't feel the hope in it because I don't know Jesus as my personal Lord and Savior. The reason that we do all of this is because of Jesus Christ, is because of the foundation, the strength, the solid ground we have in Jesus Christ. Romans 10, nine and 10 says to confess with your mouth and believe in your heart that Jesus is Lord and you will be saved. 
All it takes is your surrender. Maybe you're the second invitation and you would say, I used to know the Lord like you're talking about. I've lived in the different seasons. I've experienced those things, but I have fallen away from the Lord. I have walked away. I've allowed distractions to come in between he and I, and I wanna rededicate my life today. In just a moment, we're gonna give everyone at all of our locations an opportunity to surrender your lives to Jesus. If you're the first group, you would say, today is my day to find freedom and make Jesus the Lord of your life. And your second one, I want to rededicate and get things right with the Lord. If either of those are you with boldness and as an act of surrender and a declaration that you want to give your life to Jesus or rededicate your life today, would you just slip your hand up in the air so that we can see you? We see you. Church, let's celebrate. We see you. I see you. I see you. Praise God. I see you. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Amen. Amen. You can put your hands down. Let's all pray this prayer together. Repeat after me. Say, Jesus, today is my day. I want to give my life to you. I ask you to forgive me of all my sins. Thank you for your forgiveness. I repent right now. And from this moment on, I am choosing to live for you. You are my Father, you are my Savior, and you are my Lord. In the mighty name of Jesus we pray, amen, amen.